Hey, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going charity shop shopping in Marlborough, which is a really beautiful, picturesque and historic little town quite close to me. I've tried to go once a year. I don't think I've been this year yet, so I am long overdue a trip. They've got fantastic charity shops and I'm really excited to take you around and let's see what we can find. My channel is all about sustainable style, um, thrifting, charity shops, secondhand clothes and vintage. So if that sounds like your bag, please do consider liking and subscribing it really supports my channel and me and it would mean a lot to me thank you so much right let's get going so my mum and I have gone to Marlborough and we've started off in the Emporium of Loveliness which is a fabulous vintage shop with lots of curated pieces um, and some current pieces too and as you can see here they've got a stash an absolute stash of fabric which I really enjoyed rummaging through Upstairs they have a, a home decor section which has all sorts of tea sets and baking and mugs and it's fantastic to rummage through. There is so much there and there's so much to look at and it's in a really historic building as well so actually there are really low beams and I had to be super careful not to bang my head. You just you can see in a second there's a little sign that says mind your head and I really had to duck to avoid bumping into it. But they have all sorts of things. Um, they've got some vintage dolls and fantastic frames full of beautiful vintage pictures as well. And then you've got some different glasses for different alcoholic beverages, which I was tempted by, but I don't drink enough in order to buy them. So on to the next shop. And this is a charity shop and they organise most of their racks by colour, which I actually, I didn't used to like that, but I really like it now because it makes it more pleasing to go through. Lots of home decor, a beautiful little blue and white teapot which caught my eye, and various different trinkets and knickknacks and everything that is really pleasing to look through. So I really enjoyed this. Then moving on to another charity shop, I found a rum top jar. Now, if you've seen any of my previous videos, you know I, I tend to thrift these and I've got three already. This is a really beautiful colour and a different style to the ones I already had, but I already have three and I just couldn't bring myself to buy another one. I don't need it, so I left it for somebody else and maybe they'll start their collection. It's really taken by this coffee cup set. Um, I don't drink coffee, but just about everyone else in the household does. And I thought this would be nice. Uh, can you imagine having a nice hot chocolate in that and sitting down to watch a film? That's where my head was at, but I didn't buy it. And then I saw this glassware set. This shop had everything beautifully arranged. It was a really pleasing display of just about everything. And then I wanted to show you this. This was the radio that the shop was playing their music out of. And I thought it was really cool. Not for sale, obviously, but really, really uh, quirky. My eye was caught by these two pictures. I thought this one in particular was stunning. It was really, it felt really lonely, but really calm at the same time. I left them both because I've got enough pictures, but I do still think about the one with the trees. <laughs> On to the next shop. I found this Jules jacket, 28 pounds, and it was quilted and it looks quite thin, but it, it actually felt really solid. So I think it would keep you really warm. And then I found this Aquascutum blazer for 27 pounds. I thought that was an absolute bargain. Aquascutum, obviously a high-end designer range, really, really surprised to find it in a charity shop. <laughs> I saw lots of Kath Kidston bags. This jumper caught my eye. Look at the colour. It was a super soft texture, like chenille. Really, really beautiful colour, beautiful feel. And oh, look, it's Marks and Spencer's. <laughs> I'm always drawn to Marks and Spencer's stuff. But the label actually says it's a small, so I don't think that's going to fit me. And it was £8. I didn't get it, but I oh, I do think it would have been lovely. And then on to the final shop, which actually wasn't a charity shop. It's called The Cat's Whiskers. And look at these shelves. Every kind of vintage homeware, 
baking, storage, signage, everything you can think of, this shop had. It was absolutely fantastic. And I wanted to show you just down here, we've got all of these whiskey jars, like the one I thrifted from the car boot sale a couple of weeks ago. Some of those were 50, 60 quid, and I got mine for three, and I had no idea they were so expensive, so that was a proper bargain. This sleigh caught my eye. I thought that would look absolutely fantastic in the um, in the hallway of a big stately home next to a Christmas tree and maybe a couple of vintage ice skates as well. What a fantastic Christmas display that would be. Then we've got all these different doorknobs for if you're decorating or upcycling a piece of furniture. And then really ornate hardware as well, just door knockers and, um, and lights as well, all sorts of quirky things here. It was really fantastic. I love that sign. <laughs> down a little spiral staircase to lots of little rooms downstairs and everywhere you look there is something fantastic. We've got trays, we've got candle holders, a little sign that says Marlborough, which is lovely. And this is the first room I went into and they've got an, a propeller there or was it an oar? I'm not sure actually, I can't remember now. And then peeping out behind the basket, there was a cute little cow that caught my eye. Something else that caught my eye was the little basket full of fake food and the pine cone. I thought that was really cute. I have no need for it, but I just liked it. <laughs> it caught my eye. And then over here, we had lots of jugs and other receptacles, all in earthy colours, which I think are beautiful. Fantastic little shop. We're back home now and I've got some things to show you but before we get into that I'm just going to share a couple of reflections because charity shop shopping in Marlborough is very different to where I normally charity shop. So a couple of reflections then. Marlborough shops are more expensive and they've always been very slightly more expensive than I'm used to but definitely since I last went about a year ago the prices have gone up. Now I think we're going to find that everywhere, especially with the cost of living, everything has to put its prices up and charities are no exception. And I have no problem with paying more, but it's something I noticed, whereas before there was a slight price difference between where I'm used to, now it's quite significant. Jumpers, for example, were generally £8 in all the shops and actually they were consistently priced, which is good. So I didn't feel like I, I spent more at one shop and then went in another shop and the prices were <laughs> much lower. So, you know, consistent, which is good but consistently high. So in a way, I think that's actually a really good thing because obviously, hopefully the charities will make a bit more money. But also from a personal perspective, it really encouraged me to be very, very picky about what I bought because I only bought what I absolutely adored, which is something I try to live by anyway, but I don't always <laughs> succeed. I noticed that the quality of the stock in the shop was higher than what I'm used to. I saw Kath Kidston in every single shop. I mean, bags, Kath Kidston bags, I didn't follow a woman around. <laughs> Marlborough High Street has got some really high quality chains like jewels and I noticed that a lot of the jewels clothes have made their way into the charity shop. That's something I've noticed that if you go charity shop shopping in an area with an outlet village or some slightly higher end shops, those clothes will make their way into the charity shop so you do get quite a, a cool variety of things. And I even saw some designer brands, one of which I bought which I will show you and another was an Asker Scoot and another one was an aquascutum. However I say it, it just sounds wrong now. <laughs> anyway, it was a fancy blazer. <laughs> I didn't buy it because it's not for me, but someone else will have a fantastic bargain. Let's get into it. The first piece is a pair of shoes. I've kept the price on because I wanted to remember how much they were. I have bought some lovely, lovely black brogues. So underneath, looking at the soles, I can see that they've been worn because there is some wear, but it's not particularly bad. I don't have to get them rehealed just yet, although I will keep an eye out on those actually. 
They're in really good condition. There's no damage. Um, they've still got a lovely polish on them. I will polish them up myself, obviously, but they're in really good nick. These are really comfortable and they're my... <laughs> I don't know why I feel the need to say they're in my size because I wouldn't have bought them if they didn't fit me. But at the same time, because I'm a size eight and they're wide, chonky feet. It feels like a personal triumph every time I find a pair of shoes that fits. So yeah, they're in my size, woohoo! <laughs> I realised that I didn't have any black shoes. I've got a pair of black Chelsea boots that I lent to my daughter for her to wear to school and they have been, they're trashed. <laughs> I've got lots of brown brogues and brown Chelsea boots and that kind of thing, which is great, but I don't actually have any black ones until now. Enter the black brogues. They cost me £14.50 from Cancer Research and although I think that makes them the most expensive pair of shoes I've ever bought from a charity shop, I love them. They're really comfortable. They're really practical as well. Very smart. And they're going to be very versatile. And to prove that, I'm going to put together three outfits, three very different outfits, with them now. So this is the first outfit. Now what I like about this is that even though it's dark, it's still it still feels like me because we've got the pearls, we've got we've got pearls there as well, and then we've got beads and a little pop of white and cream, which I think is lovely. Now this is so comfortable. I feel really, really smart and really, really chic, but it's, it's so comfortable. <laughs> I feel warm as well because I've got two layers. I've got the tights, I've got the denim skirt. It's all lovely. So yeah, very, very comfortable and very cheap as well because every single thing I'm wearing came from a charity shop or a car boot sale actually because I got this skirt from a car boot sale. Some of you asked me last week if the skirt did fit and it does. I mean, look, it fits beautifully. I'm really happy and it's a nice length because it's literally just above my knee. So it's great. So this is the second outfit and I've gone for a monochrome look this time. So we've got green necklace, green jumper and green velvet trousers, which are super comfortable and very warm. Now, I thought having the cream shirt again, and but letting it untucked this time, adds a little bit of detail and breaks up the color blocking a little bit, which is lovely. This is a slightly different shade to the two greens as well. This is more of a bottle green. I absolutely adore it. I think it's beautiful. And I think it just adds a little bit extra. I've tucked the, the cuffs in this time because the sleeves are really long and I didn't feel like it needed to have the cuffs poking out. So they're in. And then the black brogues as well. Now I've worn them without socks. That's mainly because these trousers are cropped on me. So I've got a little bit of, I've got a bit of ankle showing. <laughs> I could easily put some socks on because I've got lots of different autumnal sock colors, which actually I think would look really cute poking out here. Now I do absolutely love the look where you can see the ankle. I think it's really chic. However, I get cold really easily. So I think it's probably more likely that when I go out, I will be wearing socks because otherwise my poor little feet are going to absolutely freeze and that's not good for anyone. Comfort is key. I always... But this is the look. I feel really comfy. I feel really chic as well. And that's the main thing. Oh, I love these shoes. They're so practical. So happy I bought them. So this is the look. I've gone for three different sparkly, items because I thought that brought it all together really nicely. Now I have got socks on with the braids this time because I was thinking mm, yeah I'd like to keep my feet warm and also I think it ties in nicely because you've got the socks at the bottom that are sparkly and then the top as well which is also sparkly which hopefully is coming up on camera. One thing I didn't add was a belt that's because I actually couldn't find a black belt when I was looking for my outfit but I would combine it with one I think it would tie it all together really nicely. They're very comfortable in this one I think it's uh it's a solid casual outfit, I really like it. And I think actually it would take you from somewhere, if you were just having a casual day and then you wanted to go out for drinks or something, it would work quite well with that because you've got those sparkly elements. El elements. <laughs> anyway, I really like this one. So there you have it, those are my brogues. I'm really happy that I bought them and they do go with a lot of outfits. That is a tip I try to live by when I go charity shop shopping. Will this go with at least three outfits that I already own? If the answer is yes, then great. If the answer is, oh, I'm not sure, then I reluctantly put them back. Generally, I really don't want to buy things that are standalone pieces because they end up just standing alone in my wardrobe and I never get them out because they don't go with anything. So to be versatile, they have to go with at least three outfits in my wardrobe. And they do, so I am mucho happy. <laughs> okay, on to the next piece. Oh, this is just beautiful wait till you see it and here it is in all its glory oh my word 
It is a red leather skirt of the softest leather. It's absolutely beautiful. This originally came from Kenzo jeans. The colour is gorgeous. I absolutely love this. The fit is perfect. It's like it was made for me. I feel so lucky to have found it. It's in really, really good condition. I can't see any scuffs or scratches or marks or anything. So I don't know whether someone bought it and then never wore it and donated it or whether they did wear it and they just they were just really careful with how they treated it. But it feels amazing. Now this still has the label on. Again, I left it on because I just wanted to make sure I remembered where I got it from and how much it was. This was from the RSPCA branch in Marlborough and it cost me £12. I couldn't try it on in the shop and I was a little bit nervous because I can never gauge whether something will fit me just by sight. I think it's okay and then it's a bit of a gamble but it, this does fit. I've already tried it on. I'm so happy that it fits. And again, I have put this through the three outfit test and it does work with at least three outfits. In fact, it goes with loads and maybe you wouldn't think so because it is a red leather skirt, but I found a few different combinations that I'm really excited to show you. So let's get going on those now. Okay, look at this skirt. It is so comfortable. I mean, it's not restricted. It's got a nice vent up the back so it's easy to walk. It's the softest and it fits really well. So this is really good sizing, it's true to size. Absolutely love this. Because it's a, a nice warm red skirt, deep red, I've combined it with burgundy tights and a burgundy top and then obviously burgundy boots as well. I wanted to go for monochrome but I thought slightly different shades would probably work really well because it doesn't look like I've just fallen out of a catalogue hopefully. It looks like I've combined a few different shades and it works. I really love this. It feels like a perfect winter berry outfit and I have something amazing to go with it. <laughs> I've got the perfect coat to go with this outfit. I thrifted this probably a year ago um, in a charity shop near me. It cost me £25 which I think is the most expensive coat I've ever bought from a charity shop. Well worth it though and look at this. I feel amazing in this outfit. I mean, obviously the reds don't match perfectly, but like I said, I'm fine with that because I think it adds depth to the monochromatic look, which is fantastic. But just look, I mean, my goodness. If you just said to me a few years ago, hey, Becky, you're gonna be wearing a red leather outfit almost head to toe and you'll feel amazing. I would have been like, red leather? I don't think so. <laughs> but here I am and I do love it. I mean, just look, it's fantastic. And it's all second hand, everything is second hand, which is fantastic. So I really, really like this. It's a good sustainable outfit. I feel amazing in it. How many times have I said that now? <laughs> okay, the challenge for this outfit was to create something more casual. And I love this one, it's so silly. So I've started off with my big wide brimmed hat because obviously I'm gonna keep my head warm when it gets cold. Um, I was just going to show you the outfit with this t-shirt without the jumper, but I was thinking that's that's pretty impractical. We're coming up to a very cold season now. So I've got my lovely cream jumper with a big old neck here and I've put the t-shirt over the top. Obviously a fantastic Rolling Stones t-shirt, which I got from a charity shop, of course, um, with a lovely big old sparkly logo, which is fantastic. And then I've brought in the red trainers to match with the skirt. I love this. I feel like it's really practical. It's really quirky still, but also, I'm really warm <laughs> and that's a must for me when the weather gets cold. I just want to be warm, I want to be comfortable. I just love getting new items because it encourages you to use your creativity and come up with combinations that you would never otherwise have thought of. This is one I absolutely love. I'm really pleased that I tried it. Let me know what you think. I feel like this one might be a divider. You're either gonna love it or hate it. So let me know in the comments what you think of this one in particular. <laughs> the final outfit with the red skirt is <laughs> It's a bit of a crazy one. I thought I would wear my floral sparkly blazer as a cape. And it's pretty extra, I'm not gonna lie, but I really, really like it. I think because it, it's a size larger than I am and it's got shoulder pads. So it gives me, it just gives me that massive silhouette, which is really good. And I've combined a couple of my larger pearl necklaces here, because I think it looks good, and then drawn it in with a pearl bracelet, nearly said pearl necklace, but it's a bracelet when it goes around your wrist, of course. Then I've just kept it simple on the bottom half with black tights and burgundy boots, because I think that looks good. Um, I want all the attention drawn to the top half to look at the crazy blazer. <laughs> so I've kept the bottom half quite, quite sparing, basically. So this is the outfit. You'll notice I've got quite a severe hairdo. I've had it all the way through, but 
I really like it, I'm just trying something different. And I think with this outfit in particular, it really works because it draws the attention to the crazy blazer, which is exactly what I'm after. So this is the look. So happy with what I bought. Now, those are the two things I got from charity shops. And I just thought I would show you a couple of things that I picked up from um, oh, an Aladdin's cave of treasures, honestly. So my mum and I went in the Cat's Whiskers, which is a lovely little shop in Marlborough. And it's crammed full with amazing finds, lots and lots and lots of all sorts of vintage. And I very rarely go to Marlborough. And when I do, I always try and go in the Cat's Whiskers because I think it's beautiful. So I bought some music sheets. And the reason I bought these is because I've been looking on Pinterest and I've been seeing paper crafted uh, Christmas decorations and I really wanted to give them a try. So what I'll be doing with these is turning them into really cute little baubles. I've got eight sheets here, eight sheets here, and they're very slightly different sizes and different colors, but not a huge amount. I just wanted a little bit of variety. It's 4 95 for one roll or nine pounds for two rolls. So I've got two rolls and I've got lots here, but I will of course be practicing on plain paper first just to see how it goes because I want to save my fancy paper for best. So. I'm looking forward to trying that out. If you're interested in any any sort of crafting, Christmas crafting of that kind, then let me know. I'm really happy to do a video on it because I've got lots of ideas. I like trying things out. And I think it, hopefully it's gonna be a more economical way to make some Christmas decorations and have a bit of variety this year. I'm not gonna be buying anything new. Obviously I bought this paper new. I'm literally gonna be making things. So paper chains, little paper baubles, little cardboard Christmas trees. So as an aside, if you're interested in seeing something like that, then let me know. So that is the video. Thank you so much for watching as always. Let me know in the comments which outfit you preferred and why. I always love hearing your points of view. Have a great week and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.